Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on prime numbers. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one. We will understand about prime numbers and composite numbers. Outcome number two, we will know some facts about prime numbers. And outcome number three, we will know the role of prime numbers in cryptography. Why waiting? Let's directly dive into the topic of the day, the prime numbers. What is a prime number? Actually, these prime numbers are numbers that has exactly two divisors. Say if we have a number n, then that number n will have exactly two divisors. What are all the two divisors? If the number n is prime, then the divisors are 1 and n only. It means if n is a prime number, then the prime number n can be divided by 1 and n only. It means if the number n is divided by 1, it will give the remainder 0. And if the number n which is divided by n itself, then it will give the remainder 0. For other numbers, it will not give 0 as the remainder. And that's why I told prime numbers has exactly two divisors. One is number 1 and the other one is the number itself. And if we talk about any number, every number will have prime factors. So obviously, all numbers have prime factors. Say if you take any number, say 10. So 10 will have prime factors like 2 and 5. If you don't understand this, let's see an example. Say if we have a number 10, then how can we factor this number 10? This 10 can be 1 into 10 or 10 into 1, right? So that is by default, I am ignoring 1 and that number itself. Say any number will have factors 1 and the same number. Any number you take like 2000. So 2000 divided by 1, we will get the remainder 0. And 2000 when it is divided by 2000, we will get the remainder 0. So I am ignoring 1 and the same number itself. So what are all the other numbers we have? Say if we have a number 10, this 10 can be 2 power 1 into 5 power 1, right? Or simply 2 into 5, right? So here 2 and 5 are the prime factors. Can you see here? This is prime factorization and the prime numbers involved here are 2 and 5. So that's what I told you. All numbers have prime factors. Any number you take. Obviously 10 is not a prime number. Why? If 10 is divided by only by 1 and 10 only. But here this 10 can be divided by 2 as well as 10 can be divided by 5. So 10 has factors such as 1, 2, 5 and 10. Is it having exactly two divisors? No, here it is having four divisors and that's why 10 is not a prime number. But it has prime factors. Can you see here? The prime factors are 2 and 5. Let's take another number 11. This 11 can be written as 1 into 11, right? Do we have any other factors for 11 except 1 and 11? No, we don't have any other factors except 1 and 11. So 11 can be written as 1 into 11. What are the factors involved here? 1 and 11, right? So 1 and 11. So here 11 is a prime number because this number, that is this number can be divisible by 1 and the same number itself which is 11. Let's take another number 100. This 100 can be written as 2 power 2 into 5 power 2. We can write 100 as 10 power 1 into 10 power 1 also. It is 10 into 10. But 10, how can we write? 10 can be written as 2 into 5, right? So ultimately we will have prime factors at the end. Say for example, 100 can be written as 2 power 2 into 5 power 2. So 2 power 2 is what? 4. It can also be written as 4 into 25, right? 4 into 25 is also 100 only. But ultimately, at the end if you note, there will be only prime numbers. What are the prime numbers that are involved here? 2 and 5. Is 100 a prime number? No, definitely it is not a prime number because it is divisible by 1, it is divisible by 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50 and 100. There are multiple divisors and this number 100 is not having exactly two divisors. Then moving on to 37, 37 can be written as 1 power 1 into 37 power 1 or simply 1 into 37 and this 37 cannot be written in other ways. And that's why 37 is a prime number because it has only two divisors, 1 and 37. And coming to 308, 308 can be written as 2 power 2 into 7 power 1 into 11 power 1. The prime numbers involved here are 2, 7 and 11, right? And coming to another number which is 14,688 which can be written as 2 power 5 into 3 power 3 into 17 power 1 where 2, 3, 17, all these are prime numbers. 
So from this slide, what we can understand is any number, it will have prime factors. And that's what this point says. All numbers have prime factors. Let's see how prime numbers are formally defined. So a prime number is a number which is greater than 1 with only two factors or two divisors. What are these two divisors? One is itself and the other one is 1. And it cannot be divided further by any other number without leaving a remainder. I hope this point is clear for you. Let's see some examples now. Here 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number, 9 is not a prime number. I'll tell you why 9 is not a prime number. When a number is not a prime number, then that number will be a composite number. So 9 is not a prime number, so it is a composite number. And 33 is a composite number. Let's start with 2. 2 is a prime number because 2 can be divided by 1 and 2 can be divided by 2. So a number is said to be a prime number if it is divided by 1 and it is also divided by the same number. Only on these two occasions we will get the remainder as 0. So the divisors of 2 are 1 and 2. As per the formal definition of prime numbers, we have exactly two divisors. So 2 is a prime number. Similarly, 3 is also a prime number because 3 can be divisible by 1 and 3 can be divisible by 3 only. So the divisors for 3 are 1 and 3. So we can confirm that 3 is also a prime number. Coming to 5. So 5 is also a prime number because 5 can be divided by 1 and 5 only and there are no other factors. Coming to 7. 7 is also a prime number. 9 is not a prime number because 9 can be divided by 1. 9 can be divided by 3. And 9 can be divided by 9. Are we having exactly two divisors? No, we have three divisors. So obviously 9 is not a prime number. So we refer 9 as a composite number. And finally 33 is not a prime number because it has factors such as 1, 3, 11 and 33. Since we have four factors, obviously 33 is not a prime number. I hope prime numbers are clear. Now the important question is why we are dealing this prime number and mainly why we are dealing this prime number in cryptography. Before answering this question, let's see some facts about prime numbers. Actually, 2 is the only even prime number. If you note here, all prime numbers are odd in nature and 2 is the smallest prime number as well. So you may be asking, is 1 a prime number? No, 1 is not a prime number. Now another interesting fact is that, except for 2 and 5, all prime numbers end in the digit 1, 3, 7 or 9. So mostly the prime numbers will be ending with 1, 3, 7 or 9. But if a number is ending with 2 or 5, obviously that number will not be a prime number. Why? Because when a number ends with 2, obviously it can be divided by 2, right? At the same time, when a number ends with 5, that can also be divided by 5. So obviously a number which is ending with 2 or 5, it cannot be a prime number. Let's now focus on why prime numbers are important in cryptography. Actually, many encryption algorithms are based on prime numbers only. You may be asking why prime numbers are having more significance in cryptography. The reason is, generally multiplying two large prime numbers can be very fast. So this is one of the reasons for having a prime numbers. Say if you are given with two prime numbers, then you can multiply these two prime numbers very fast. But it is extremely difficult to do the reverse. It means it is extremely computer intensive to do the reverse if a big or a large number is given and finding the prime factors of that large number will be a tough job. So that is factoring very large prime numbers is very hard. Very hard means it may not be possible or computers take a long time to do the processing and that's where the real security relies. In a nutshell, let's take x and y are two prime numbers and we are getting the product of these two prime numbers x, y as n for example. Multiplying x and y to generate n is easy. In case if you are given with n and you want to find x and y, that is extremely difficult. Or computer takes longer time to do that calculation. And that's one of the reasons for having prime numbers in cryptography. Before we conclude, let's see, are they prime numbers? Is 5393 a prime number? Maybe this one or this one, is this a prime number or finally is this a prime number? So cryptographic algorithms or encryption algorithms uses large prime numbers only. Anyway, don't worry about this now. In order to find whether these numbers are prime numbers or not, we have some algorithms to do that. Anyway, I will talk about that while dealing with the topic testing for primality. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood about prime numbers and composite numbers. 
We have seen some facts about prime numbers and we understood the role of prime numbers in cryptography. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.